In this lesson, you're going to learn how to go from the standard form of the quadratic equation to the vertex form of a quadratic equation. And we're going to get there by completing the square. And we're going to do three examples. We're going to start off with an easy example where that leading coefficient is 1. A little bit more challenging example where that leading coefficient is not 1, but it's an integer. And then a, a more difficult one where that leading coefficient is negative and a fraction. So let's start off with the first one, y equals x squared plus 6x minus 8. What do you do to complete the square? Well, the first step is you want to get that constant, that number, on the other side of the equation with the y. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to add 8 to both sides of the equation. That's going to give us y plus 8 equals x squared plus 6x. And when you complete the square, it's easier if that leading coefficient, that number in front of the x squared, is 1. In this case, it is. So the next thing we want to do is we want to look at that number that's in front of x. We want to take half that number and square it. So you want to take 6 divided by 2 and square it. That's going to be 9. I usually like to do the work a little bit off to the side. If I add 9 out of thin air, right, just I'm adding 9 over here, I have to add 9 to the other side of the equation to keep it balanced, okay? So we don't want to change the equation. We just want to change the way that it looks. So this comes out to y plus 17 equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now what we've done is we've created a perfect square trinomial, and you can factor this easily by taking half of this middle coefficient, and it's the quantity squared. Now if this was minus 6x, this would be minus 3. And you can check your work. You just have to write x plus 3 times x plus 3 and FOIL it, and you'll see that you get back this original uh, trinomial here. But that's just kind of like a shortcut. So now all we have is y plus 17 equals x plus 3 squared. We want to get y by itself, so we're just going to subtract 17 from both sides of the equation. And so that gives us y equals the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 17. And now you can see that it's in this form right here. The vertex is going to be the opposite of positive 3, that's negative 3, and this is going to be negative 17. So that's our vertex. The a value is positive 1, so we know the parabola is going to open up. And you've got it. Okay, number 2 now, we've got y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 1. Notice we have that leading coefficient, uh, a, which is not equal to 1. So this is a little bit more challenging, but the first step is we want to get the constant, this number on the other side, with the y. So we just subtract 1. We've got y minus 1 equals 2 times x squared minus 8x. Now the next step is I'm going to factor out this 2 out of both of these terms. So it's just like doing the distributive property backwards. We're factoring out or dividing out uh, 2. And what I'd like to do is I like to leave a little space here for completing the square. So what you want to do is you want to take this coefficient, the number in front of the x, you want to divide it by 2 and square it. So that's negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. I'm going to add 4 here. But the, here's where students sometimes go a little bit off the tracks. They say, hmm, if I added 4 here, Mario, don't I add 4 over here? But because this is inside of the parentheses, this 4, it's actually 2 times 4. So really out of thin air, we're adding 8 to the right side of the equation. We have to add 8 to the left side of the equation. So that's going to give us y plus 7 equals 2. And then now we're going to factor this. And it's a perfect square, perfect uh, trinomial here. And so we're going to write it as a binomial squared. And remember, it's always half of that middle coefficient. So this is going to be x minus 2, the quantity squared. If this was x squared plus 4x, then it would be x plus 2, the quantity squared. Now we're almost there. We want to get y by itself. So let's just subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. And we get y equals 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 7. And you can see now the vertex is going to be at positive 2. This one's the opposite. Negative 7, this one's the same. A value is positive 2. That 2 is going to stretch the parabola, making it a little bit narrower, and it's going to open up because it's positive, and you've got it. Before we jump into number 3, if we haven't met yet and you're new to the channel, my name is Mario uh, from Mario's Math Tutoring, and what I do is I tutor students full-time. But what I do is I take what I learn from working with my students, and I try to condense it down and take the simplest and the best way of explaining some of these problems so that I can share them with you so you can get the benefit too. And my goal for the channel is to really... You know, make learning math less stressful so you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. And so that's what we're all about here. Let's go into the last problem, and 
I want to really show you how to complete the square with these more difficult ones. And again, that first step is you want to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, okay? And the reason you're doing that is you're just trying to get that number out of the way, okay? So that you can complete the square a little bit more easily. So now what we're left with, because these cancel, is negative 1 half x squared minus 4x. You don't want that leading coefficient to be something other than 1. It makes it difficult to complete the square. So what I like to do is I like to factor out the leading coefficient. And when you factor something out, it's really like dividing it out. So you're, it's like dividing out negative 1 half. But what we do is we put that negative 1 half in front of the parentheses like this. This is going to cancel. That's going to give us x squared. Remember, when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is really like multiplying by negative 2, which is going to give us positive 8x. And then I like to leave a little space for completing the square. Now, if you're not sure if you did it right, you can always distribute the negative 1 half. That's going to give you negative 1 half x squared. Negative 1 half times 8x gives you back the negative 4x, and you can see it matches. So you know you're on the right track. And then now when we complete the square, we say, what's half of this middle coefficient squared? So I like to do that work a little bit off on the side here. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and then 4 squared is 16. Now if I add 16 to the right, you're probably saying, well, Mario, you have to add 16 to the left. But because it's in parentheses, it's actually negative 1 half times 16. That's like negative 8. That again, we're adding out a thin air, negative 8 to the right side. We have to add negative 8 to the left side to keep the equation balanced. We don't want to change you know, the overall equation. We just want to change the way that it looks. We just want to change the form. So now, because this is a perfect square, we can factor it. And it's going to factor to x plus 4, the quantity squared. Remember, it's always half of that middle coefficient. If this was negative 8x, I would write negative 4. The last step, we want to get y by itself, so I'm just going to add 11 to both sides of the equation, and that gives us y equals negative 1 half, the quantity x plus 4 squared, plus 11. So our vertex is going to be at negative 4, positive 11, and the a value is negative, which means it opens down. Uh, the 1 half is going to make the graph wider, so it's like a vertical shrink or vertical compression, and you got it. The other thing that you learn about when you're doing this completing the square is solving equations by completing the square. And I talk about that in that video right there. So follow me over there to get some more practice with completing the square and solving equations by completing the square. I'll see you in that video.